This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to some weekend magic. So today we're going to talk about grinding your way out of bronze. Let's get to it. All right, so we're over here in the deck area and we're going to start off by talking about a few different options. So after you've played for about a week, two weeks, you should have unlocked a pretty good, good chunk of decks. You get from here all the way down to here. Uh, they give you all of these different pre-constructed decks and it's a good chunk of cards. So we're going to take a look at a few different options here. Well, two different options here. The Jungle Secrets deck is a really good deck. It's a great one to just bust right out of the Bronze League, except I highly recommend a few changes and we'll get to that in here in a second. That's uh, this deck you see here. And then we have a second deck here that's going to require you to probably purchase a few cards. You should have a majority of the cards in it. There, There's a few that you may have to purchase that I've gotten through just unlocking packs and then I actually used a wild card to unlock a second one and we will get to that. So we're gonna start off with the Jungle Secrets though because this one, you have all the cards. After you've unlocked all of these decks, you should, when you get your last, you'll know you've unlocked them all because the last time you unlock decks, you'll get like five at one time and that's when you know you've reached your uh, your deck limit on the free decks that they give you but this jungle secrets here is really fast and if you don't shut it down quick you'll lose the game so it's it's a pretty good deck there the only problem is if we take a look at it here you got tons of merfolk and it's very creature heavy you can see we got 27 creatures and only eight non-creature spells the downside to this deck is it doesn't give you any way to deal with flyers or big threats you do get the disperse card which is okay for bouncing targets but the downside is is it doesn't give you a way to permanently deal with a large threat you bounce it back to their hand and then it just comes back to bite you again so my recommendation for this deck is to just remove all of those and replace those with Water Knot. Water Knot's going to basically make a creature useless and the only way that they can deal with it is by either bouncing the creature back to their own hand or getting rid of Water Knot altogether. So it gives you a much better way to deal with stuff like Flyers because this deck has no other way whatsoever to deal with Flyers. It can deal with larger creatures mid to late game, which is okay, but if they're flying, you're, you're pretty much screwed. So my advice would be to just copy that deck over, clone it, and replace those disperse spells with Water Knot. So let's take a quick look at this deck. We'll, we'll play around with it here, and I'll show you how it performs. You get an idea of what it's all about, its strengths, its weaknesses. I'll talk about it while we're playing it, and then we will take a look at the Helmsman deck here, uh, and I will talk about it and how you can uh, build that yourself. Okay, so here we are with our opening hand. You can see that we got a, I mean, this is pretty decent for an opening hand. We can lay this down, then cast this, turn two, and uh, it's very forest heavy, but you know what? We're gonna keep it because the main thing with this is to attack fast and attack often, and uh, you should win the game pretty quickly. It has a relatively low mana curve, which is good and allows it to be fast. The downside to it is, if you cannot destroy your opponent quickly, you will probably lose the game. If they can shut you down with a board wipe, you're probably done. Now, I know this video is talking about grinding your way out of bronze, and I'm still here in the old bronze. Uh, don't pay attention to that. I've been testing a lot of decks and uh, losing a lot, so it just it just devastates that that rank there, and that's that's just going to be part of it. I'll probably be stuck in old bronze hell forever because you know got to test decks, and not every deck works out well, and then you lose games. Okay, so we're gonna drop the old river sneak here. Now they're probably gonna want to find an answer to this relatively quickly. Then next turn we will play this, and we will pump up the uh, the old river sneak there, and we will drop this at the same time. So we're gonna lay this down. And then we will drop this. We will put that point that it's going to, or that counter that it's going to give us on the old uh, river sneak there. And then we will drop the mist binder. And now we're already attacking with a 4-4. So this is going to demand attention relatively quickly. And if they don't have an answer for it, they probably have a lightning strike in there somewhere, I would think. 
If they don't, next turn we're going to pump it even more because it looks like we're playing against a burn deck, so we're going to want to shut any chance down of those little tiny lightnings or, or shocks or, st or stuff like that destroying this creature. This can easily win you the game. Okay, so they got a 1-3 out with flying, and it gets plus 2 whenever they cast an instant or sorcery. Okay, so we're going to drop our other forest here, and then what we're going to do is yeah so what we're gonna do we're gonna stick with the original plan we're gonna cast this and i'm actually going to split these counters because you don't want to put all your counters like if they destroy this if they have something in here that just destroys target then you just wasted all those counters okay so now they're going to deal one damage to all of our creatures and stop them from blocking are they going? Okay, I was wondering there for a second if they were going to attack. So, yep, there we go. So, we just took three, but they know they can't block it. So, they're just trying to out damage us. We're in a race for damage right now. So, let's cast. We're going to cast this one because that's going to give us another merfolk to attack with. And there we go. So, then we're just going to attack with actually all of these. Normally, you wouldn't attack with this one, but they don't have a blocker. So, there you go. GG. And that was game. So you can see how this deck can win games relatively quickly. It's it's such a low mana curve and all of your creatures boost themselves and synergize so well together that if you don't shut it down quickly, it will just overwhelm your opponent. Okay, so let's take a look at this deck and I'll make sure I put the link in the description to this deck. So if you wanna try it out, you can. So the deck has two of Johnny's Welcome, Three Bishops Soldiers, three Knights Pledge, three Seal Aways, two Legion Lieutenant, two Inspiring Clerics, three Luminous Bonds, three Murder. We got a lot of control. We got a lot of shutdown in here. Three of the Skymark Blood Letters, three of the Leonian War Leaders, two Call to the Feast, two Helm of the Host. Now, this is a card that you will probably have to use your wild cards on if you want to. If you do not want to use this card, you do have other options. If we go over here and we take a look, you should have one or two of these. And if you don't want to use your rare wild cards, you can use your uncommons to unlock a second one of these if you don't have it. The card draw will help you almost just as much as this. However, this is kind of this this deck's win condition, but not necessarily. And I'll explain as we're playing it. It can win you games pretty easily because the way this whole thing synergizes together. Then we have two of the Epicure of Blood, three of the Vampire Sovereigns, and then we just have some plains and some swamps and some Forsaken Sanctuaries. Okay, so let's do a round with this deck and I'll explain to you how it works, the thought process behind it and all of that. Okay, so here we go with our opening hand and I don't want to cast, this guy's great to have, but I don't want him to be the first thing I cast. He's just going to get nuked and we don't have any other good starting creatures. These are all too far in, so we're actually going to mulligan this hand and see what we got here. Okay, I'm gonna take the chance on this one because on turn three, if they put out something that's too much of a threat, we can Luminous Bonds it, and then on turn four, we should be able to cast this. So we're gonna keep this hand, but it's risky. But the thing with, uh, let's see, do we wanna keep that? Yeah, let's keep that on top. The thing with this deck is you can't be afraid to take damage. The main thing that, the main problem with this deck and your main worry is being overwhelmed quickly. Now, if they got like one or two creatures out, it's just kind of pecking you here and there, you should be fine because you're gonna gain all of that health back quickly once the deck kicks in. If you're playing against the Merfolk deck, the Merfolk starter deck, or a deck that's similar to it, you're probably gonna lose. Like I've, I lose to that deck all the time. It's, this deck just is not fast enough to keep up with it. If any like pro deck builders out there wanna take a shot at you know speeding this deck up a little bit, by all means have a go at it. Let me know in the comments how it works out for you. I would love to know. Uh, this is a pretty much mid-game deck here, but it, it has the capabilities most of the time to hang on till mid-game without much issue. If you can make it to mid-game, you've won. It just gains so much life that the, the opponent really can't do much about it. So you can see here, we're taking a little bit of damage. No big deal. We're going to drop down a swamp there, and uh, yeah, I'm just going to 
It's gonna pass the turn here. They're gonna hit us for four, four next turn. Maybe a little more. They might be able to buff one of their creatures. We'll see what happens here. Nope, they're only attacking for two, which I would not have done. I would have attacked for four, but okay. So we're gonna lay the, the other swamp there, and then we're going to drop the old uh, call to the feast. That's gonna get us some bodies on the ground, some little blockers, get us some life back. And now they've cast the boar, which is not a problem. I may just use the luminous bonds, although I know they've probably got a rather large creature just hanging out in this deck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna block this guy here. So essentially what, what's gonna happen is we're only gonna take one damage because we're gonna gain that life back there. And we just got a murder, so that's super handy. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cast the Vampire Sovereign. That's gonna get us three health back, and then we will let the opponent go. Now we're gonna hang on to her, because what we're gonna do next, hopefully, if they don't play anything too big that we have to spend our mana on, we're gonna cast the Helm of the Host. So he's gonna attack with everything. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to block one of these with both of those. So that'll kill him and negate that damage. We'll end up taking four, which isn't a big deal because we just gained three back. Your health in this is very, like I said, you're going to go back and forth, up and down constantly. It's not that big of a deal. Now he's, he's trying to think. He's going to, yeah, I figured as much. He wants to kill both of these, but I don't care. We're blocking the damage. Okay, so I think our best bet instead of casting this is to shut this guy down and then cast our bishop soldier. So we're just gonna drop this guy out like so, and then we will slap that on the old boar there because I have to block him with two. I don't wanna have to fool with that. I would rather just block one and trade. Once again, I'm not too worried about my life. I'm willing to let my life go. Yeah, see, this is what we were waiting on right here. I'm willing to let my life go super low because I know I can get it back. Once I cast Helm of the Host and get it on her and we're duplicating her every turn, we're hitting them for three and gaining three every turn. And really all we have to do is just sit here and count down till they lose. So he's attacking. We're going to, uh, we're going to make this trade because he has no other cards in hand. So I know it's a safe trade to make. And we just negated that damage there. And now what we're going to do, we're going to pass another turn on getting the Helm of the Host out, but he's shut down right now. So once we cast this, now there is a chance that he could draw a big 12-12 here, but I'm going to take that chance and uh, I'm actually not going to attack. We're just going to wait because he might have enough mana and enough out to, uh, to get that big boy out and we don't have anything to shut it down. Okay, so now we just got this... Uh, we got her, so it's not not too big of a deal. He's going to hit us for three, but I'm going to drop the Helm of the Host next turn. Take a little damage. Oh, he's he's getting brave here. He has no cards in hand, and he's attacked. We can block this and kill this easy, so I'm going to do that. If worse comes to worse, I could put helm, the Helm on this guy here as well. So, yeah, we're going we're gonna to take that trade. I'll take two. Okay, we're dropping the Helm, and now we're going to pass the turn. Okay, and he got screwed on the draw there, so he's probably going to hit us for two again. Maybe. Maybe he'll attack. Maybe he won't. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens. Nope, and he passed the attack. So we've pretty much won this game now because now we just equip the helm like so. Once we go into combat, we hit them for three. We gain three, and we gained another creature. We'll pass the turn, and he's drawing land. So this is it. Now this this deck has won. He just doesn't realize it yet. He's not even going to bother. I would have honestly poked and seen what happened, but you know, he's not. He's just going to sit there. So now we're going to throw this guy out just to hit him for another one and transfer that life over. And now I think he knows that he's lost and he's just he's just counting down the time because he's annoyed. So, you know what? We're going to go ahead and just cast this one too. Why not? We have the mana for it. Let's go ahead and hit him for another one. Gain our life back. Yep, thanks for the life there. I should change this the name of this deck to Siphon. Because that's essentially all we do. So then we're going to hit him for another three. Nothing he can do about it. And now that we are at 19, I'm going to attack. 
I have two blockers here. If I need them, I don't care if they die, to be honest. And I'm going to hit him for six. He can't block. So he may or may not just concede here. And I know he has no answers in this deck for this. Yeah, that's not going to save you, buddy. So even if he attacks, I can I can absorb every bit of damage that he's going to put out. And he's dead next turn. I don't even have to attack. All I have to do is go to the combat phase. Yeah, I'm not even going to block because I don't even care. He knows he's lost. I know he's lost. He's just denying the inevitable. So that's it. We draw our card. We go to the combat phase. Wish him a good game. And uh, yeah, that's it. So that was an ideal situation on how this deck plays out. So we're going to play one more just to see what happens here. The deck can lose. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's infallible because it does have its faults. But for the most part, it will beat pretty much all of the pre-constructed decks except for the merfolk one it's just way too fast and this deck has no way to deal with it and it has no board clears it has single target clears but no full full board wipes okay so here we go we pretty much got mana screwed right from the get-go i mean i love everything else about this hand but the one swamp that's that's risky and i'm i'm not willing to take it um that's Mana heavy, but okay, we'll hope we'll get something good on the draw. Yeah, I'll take the seal away. Would have preferred a creature, but you know, sometimes you got to take what RNG gives you. Once again, I have the lieutenant here, but I'm not going to play the lieutenant because it will get knocked down pretty quickly. And we may be going up against the mer- Yep, we're going up against the merfolk deck. We're probably going to lose this. I would say there's a 95% chance we're going to lose this. I just cannot, I can't deal with it fast enough. I know he doesn't have anything to, to destroy this, so I'm going to go ahead and cast it. Because then when I cast this, they'll all become 2-2s. Two Luckily, we drew this, and this may give us the ability to deal with the situation. I don't know. We'll see. So I'm going to have to take this damage because I do not want to block and lose that. All right, so we're going to drop a planes here. And uh, there's not a whole lot we can do. Um... She's a 3-2, he's a 2-1, he's already expended all of his use except for just poking at us, and she may be a threat, but I'm going to go ahead and pass the turn and see here. I'll save Seal away just in case I feel too threatened. I think once we get these on the board, we may be all right for a hot minute, but we'll have to wait and see what we draw. So she's going to have to go quickly. So as soon as she hits the board, I'm going to murder her. All right, so he's going into the attack phase. I'm going to go ahead and just destroy her. This is, this is a big threat in this deck. Oh. Nice. Okay. So, uh, he's going to have to recast her, but he wasted one of his, uh, disperses. So, that's going to negate some of the damage we're going to take here. But I'm not sure that will be enough. All right. So, we're going to drop that. Then we're going to drop these down. Now they are two twos. Now we have a little bit of life gained. So, we may be in this game. We may be in it. All right, luckily we drew another murder, so we may actually be able to survive this. I don't know. Uh, where He didn't attack, and I'm not sure I want to attack, because then he's just going, you know what, we're going to do it. We're going to play aggressive and just see how it goes. I haven't won a match against this deck yet. Oh, great. That's never good. So now he just busted them all down to 1-1s. Question is, is he going to block or is he going to take the damage? Probably going to block at least one. Yeah. And then, I mean, we still gain three life and then we'll just cast this back down. So now we're going to use the seal away on the river sneak as soon as he attacks. He's going to attack this turn. Yep. And we're just going to seal that away because that's going to be very dangerous for us. And uh, then we're just going to take that damage. And he's going to draw two cards, which sucks. I could murder this, but I'm not going to because I know he has this and I would much rather murder that. So we're going to cast the old uh, sky mark here. And uh, yeah, we're just going to pass the turn. So you can see how this deck just... It gets out of hand way too fast and 
the deck that I'm playing doesn't really have any way to deal with it. Now, if we drew another uh, one of uh, these or another one of these and the Lieutenant here, we might be a little better off, but uh, yeah. So we're going to, he may have, he cast her again, so he may have another uh, Disperse. We're going to just go ahead and give it another shot. And he didn't, okay. So that works out good for us here. And uh, I really don't have, I, I really can't do it. I can't afford to attack, so we're just gonna pass the turn. And we're about to take one heck of a heavy hit. Oh, and he had another one. Yeah, we're screwed. We've lost this game. There's nothing we can do about it. Yeah, GG. All right, so let's do a quick recap here. So you got the Merfolk deck right here, Old Jungle Secrets. But like I said, I highly recommend removing those disperses and replacing those with the Water Knots to allow you to deal with bigger creatures. And then we have the deck that I created here, and they both have their flaws. The situation with the Merfolk deck, if you come into contact with a board clear, you're screwed. Once it loses momentum, it's done. You have to win fast and early. Otherwise, late game, you're probably gonna lose. With this deck, if your opponent is playing a super fast deck, you're probably going to lose. However, if you come into pretty much into contact with any of these other decks, you have answers in this deck to deal with them. It's only the uh, the basically the swarm decks that are going to screw you over. This can even deal with burn decks, pretty much anything that I've come into contact with. And the new links that I'm going to put in the description, I've been running a deck tracker that tracks the stats, so you can get a better idea of how this deck performs. I think with this current match, I should have won 10 and lost four with it so far. So you be the judge if you wanna spend the few wild cards that you may need to spend in order to create this deck. But like I said, you can uh, swap out those Helm of the Host for additional card draw if you wish. But uh, hopefully this has been helpful to some of you new players out there. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm interested to know if it helps anybody out and uh, what else you'd like to see in the future. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my Lee Crow Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like the comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Till next time, thanks for watching.